Hello, I'd like to welcome you to this podcast series of the University of Lausanne. Next to me is sitting John Antonakis, Professor of Organizational Behavior who has specialized on leadership. My name is Ulrich Hoffrage, Professor of Decision Theory, and both of us are at the Faculty of Business and Economics at the University of Lausanne. John, you're the first author of a paper published this week by Science. The paper is entitled Predicting Elections, Child's Play. Second author is one of your students, Olaf Dalgas. Could you tell us in a nutshell what this paper is about? Hello. Well, basically what we found out in this paper was that little children playing an innocuous game were able to select the winners of election results um, that had taken place in France uh, several years ago. Um, the implications of these results are that the actual voters are being highly biased by the facial appearances um, of the political candidates. Um, to give you an idea about what we did, I'd like to do a demonstration for you and the viewers. So um, I'm going to show you a series of pictures. The first one is actually from the study that we replicated. The study was done by Todorov a couple of years ago and was published in Science. So what he did was he showed the winner and the runner-up of an election race in the Congress or the Senate of the United States. So basically what he did is he asked uh, which of the two people shown in the pictures were the more competent. So I'll give viewers a chance to also try to guess um, who of these two people are competent. So Ulrich, who do you think of, um, from these two people, who looks the more competent? Okay, I'd say the more competent, huh? Okay. I'd say the left one. At least I would vote him. Well, that's in fact what the person who actually won was the person on the left, a certain Mr. Feingold. All right, so then what we did is we replicated the same protocol using faces from the French election. So I purposefully selected two rather interesting looking individuals. Um, these two chaps, we would say, both of them look rather interesting. Well, to their Muscular. parents, muscular, well, rather big, uh, sturdy. Uh, people. Strong. strong, yes. So to their parents, obviously, they would look pretty competent or intelligent or nice. However, when I show these faces to um, groups of adults, they usually start laughing. Um, I don't know why they do that, because I find both these chaps rather handsome. Um, but who do you think from these two uh, actually was the winner? Okay, he's... Should I say? Yes. I'll take the right one. Well, you did right. At least he's smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Viewers, you must know that um, to get all five of these right, um, uh, given that you have a binary choice and five options, it's less than three chances out of a out of hundred that you can get these right merely by chance alone. Um, these are the, actually the two photos we used from the paper um, that we published. So who from these two do you think actually was the winner? He looks a bit older and more experienced, but he's look. I think he's one. The one on the left. Well, more correct. handsome and <laughs> younger. Or can, can say ex I can, interesting. I cannot say exactly why. You don't know why. Well, I that's don't know the interesting why. Thing. I don't yeah, know why. That's the interesting. But he has only a small tendency. Okay. Here we have two women. Uh, we didn't have that many women, but uh, here are the ones uh, that we had. So, from these two people, who do you think uh, won the election race? Who looks more competent? Left, I would say, a bit older, more experienced, intelligent. The right one, more handsome. So probably voters would go for the right one. Well, voters went for the right one. That is correct. I would have chosen the last one. Well, we didn't ask them who was more attractive. That's the funny part. But And I'll get to that in a little bit later. And for the last pair of photos, we have these two chaps, these two gentlemen. So I would say for me, it's the easiest one on this set, right one. That's correct. And the interesting thing is we showed uh, one of our marketing people from Unicom uh, these sets just before we started the experiment, and he got five out of five correct as well. So really, this is what we found out, is that playing a little game, and I will explain what we did with the children, they were able to select the winner of the election race merely by looking at the photos of the candidates. Okay, so, John, in the next minute we talk about these findings in a bit more detail, and we do this in a face-to-face -face situation. I see your face, look at you, you see my face, look at me, and the readers or viewers will see our faces. So compare this to a radio interview, or let's say a written text. How exactly is this different? How would you describe? What does a fat face add? Mm -hmm. 
So what happens is basically that when observers are trying to infer characteristics of somebody, they will go with what they get. So the first thing that people usually see is a face. And a lot of research suggests that individuals will make inferences about the person's competence, the person's personality, uh, merely by looking at the individual's face. Of course, as they receive more information about the individual, they will make an adjustment. The problem is that the adjustment is almost always insufficient. So if, for example, I looked very dumb um, to somebody, um, however, after they heard me speaking, they realized that actually I wasn't that dumb and what I said was rather intelligent, they will correct the initial classification, but they won't correct it enough. There will still be some residue left from the initial classification. And this also plays a role in political elections? I think so? Absolutely, and, and that's what we were interested in finding out. So what we did is we replicated a paper by Todorov, um, as I showed you in the beginning, and what they found was that voters could reliably um, distinguish the winner from the loser merely by um, uh, responding to questions about the competence, the intelligence, and the leadership of the individual concerned. What's also very interesting is that the, in one of the variants of this experiment, um, they showed the faces for only one second. Even with one second um, uh, exposure time, individuals were as reliable as they were when they were giving more time. Um, what's also very interesting is they gave uh, another variation of the experiment where they allowed and they presented more information about the candidates. The voters, the simulated voters, actually um, did take this information into account. However, they didn't ponder that information sufficiently. They were still anchored in their initial classifications. When I saw these results, I was completely shocked. I thought, there's just no way we could um, replicate these in Switzerland. But then I thought again, and I thought about how we think, how we decide, and I thought, well, I think we can replicate these results, and that's what we tried to do in the first instance, replicate the results. How is what you did different to that Todorov study? How did you extend it? What we did that was different was we included children in the experiment. First, we replicated the Todorov results with adults using pairs of faces from the 2002 French parliamentary elections. Then what we did is we um, showed the same pairs of faces to little children. We did this in the context of the Porte Ouverte, that's the open house of the University of Lausanne at the end of May last year. So basically the children, as you know, because we designed the experiment together, and we're working on several papers, by the way, um, from this database, um, the children played a, a simulation where they had to go from Troy to Ithaca, and during which time they had to make some decisions about certain choices they had to take regarding the journey. So what we made salient was the fact that, of course, a captain has to be competent in directing or governing a vessel. Then at the end of the um, little game that the children played, we asked them, after presenting two faces to them, who they would choose to be the captain of their boat. Of course, we randomly placed the uh, order of faces and the orders of pairs, um, and that each child um, rated one set of faces. And what was interesting is that there was no difference in the pattern of predicted responses when we compared the children to the first adult group. What's also interesting is that we had adults play the game, and when we added a second group of adults along with the children data, the age of the individual did not discriminate how accurate the individual was. So there was basically no difference between the adults and the children in terms of how they predicted these faces, and more importantly, both adults and, and uh, children were able to predict the actual election outcomes, which is a rather strange finding. How robust are these results across different possible questions? I mean, you have this high predictability of election outcomes. Hmm? You have asked, whom would you choose as a leader? You could have asked, who is more attractive? Who looks more competent? Who is more intelligent? Would this make a difference? Um, in fact, it doesn't really make a difference to the results. Uh, Todorov, in his first uh, experiment, did control for attractivity, attractiveness, how attractive the individual was or how trustworthy the individual was. These 
ratings did not predict anything beyond what was predicted by ratings of competence. So what really mattered was how competent per se the individual seemed, how intelligent they seemed, and how leader-like they seemed. So those are the three key questions, and those were the three key questions we also asked the adults in our sample. That's interesting. And it brings me to my next uh, question, and I want to elaborate on this a bit more. How can we explain this? So we have elections in France. Hmm? Actual adults voted real elections. And we have these studies where adults and children predicted or voted who should be the captain here. Hmm? So the real adults have seen the faces, the children have seen the faces. The real adults, I mean, they knew presum presumably a bit more about it. No? These were their candidates in their districts. Uh, so it, they had the opportunity to judge on maybe something they knew about their personality, they've heard speeches on them, uh, but still same preferences. Huh? So one possible explanation, let me, is this summary okay? Yes, yes. Good. So one possible explanation. Um, and now let's start with a more pleasant one. So let's go to a very 